Jamelia, uh, she says, I've become a fan of you all via the Property Law Alliance on YouTube. Hey, we have a fan. <laughs> uh, her queries regarding the actions of an agent who recently sold her property. Uh, she has noticed some latent defects once taking occupation of the property, and she has requested that the issues are resolved with the seller. Uh, the agent's response has been that he is not the primary agent with regards to the sale. However, on the letterhead on the OTP and the other documentation, she notices that uh, it was his uh, in his agency's own name. She asks, is this legal or even ethical? Um, she and she says, please could you respond to my question and advise me on a way forward. Okay, so the, the, look, there's a lot, there's a lot to this question, and the. Uh, obviously a lot of the answers will depend on very specific facts so unfortunately with these type of questions we don't have all the facts at hand so it's very difficult to um, um to, to, uh, to answer every possible contingency or every possible facet of it um, so the first thing that you need to consider is there's uh there's basically three parties so Two parties to the sale transaction, the state agent obviously broke the transaction. So the, the, from a facilitation perspective, you have three parties now in the picture. The purchase is the aggrieved party, right? So these, this leaves two parties that you would have recourse against as a purchaser. So that's good news. That means that it's not only just one person, it's two people. Now, the next step is to determine whether you actually have recourse. So the first part of the question is to try and understand this question of defects, right? Uh, latent defects, patent defects, uh, the question of footsteps, um, whether the Consumer Protection Act applies. And that's why I said there's a lot of facets to this before. So before we start going after the estate agent and saying whether they did their job or not, we need to take a step back and try to figure out, well, what, what is the defect? Um, is the seller a private seller? Is this a defect that the seller would have known about? Um, so some things might be latent to a purchaser, but not latent to a seller. But some things are latent to a seller. That's the reality. There's certain things that a seller doesn't know about that could very coincidentally only arise at the time of you buying. It's happened before, right? So now it's, it's that question. If the seller is, for example, a developer, it's a different story because then things like the Consumer Protection Act applies. Uh, developers, even as property practitioners, have certain uh, obligations and duties. So it's a different conversation to have because then the seller, irrespective of whether uh, there's a footsteps clause, and for, for everyone's sake, footsteps basically means buying the property as is. Uh, so back in the day, before the CPA ca came into play, it was quite simple to say, if I buy footsteps, it means that I need to take as much care as possible to make sure that this property is perfect because I'm not going to get a second bite of the cherry. Once it transfers into my name, it's my problem. Now, with, with the introduction of the Consumer Protection Act, this was basically changed because a purchaser could still sign footsteps and say, our buyer's is. But if the CPA applied to a transaction, they'd be able to actually fall back onto the CPA and claim a refund or a reduction of the purchase price or cancellation of the contract or whatever the case is. So in a case like this, we need to know who the seller is, whether the Consumer Protection Act applies, uh, what is the latent defect. If the seller knew about the latent defect, then forget the CPA, you can still hold the seller liable because then it's basically fraud or negligent misrepresentation or whatever the case is. So, um, so that's the first step is we need to figure out what is the defect and whether there's even a claim for this defect, right? Um, second step is now to try to figure out, now assuming that there is a claim, that it was latent, uh, but the seller knew about it. Now, if the seller knew about it, it was latent, and the estate agent looked at the property, got the seller to sign a mandatory disclosure form, and the agent did their job. Because remember, the agent isn't a property inspector. So if you walk through the property and you didn't know to something, it's very likely that the state agent in the same in the same way would have walked through the property and not noticed something. So you can't just assume that the agent is responsible simply because there's an issue. It also has to do with what the engagement is with the seller. So now if the agent didn't take due care, 
and didn't have a mandatory disclosure form signed. That's a different story because there you might have recourse against the estate agent. But if the agent did their job and actually got this thing signed by the seller and the seller lied about this defect, then your recourse is actually only against the seller. So now that's the second facet of this is who do you actually have to claim against? Uh, who did what in this process, presuming that a latent defect does exist and that there is some kind of recourse or a lie or whatever the case is. Again, like I mentioned before, if CPA applies, you could go against the seller as well and uh, get a refund. Third component of this now comes to professional, um, like ethical, and uh, uh, like professional behavior and that sort of thing. So even if you find that, you know, there was a defect, but, you know, the estate agent did the best they could. It's really just the seller's fault. The seller's a crook. But the fact that the estate agent isn't responding to you and isn't engaging with you, that's a professional question. And that's something that's dealt with better by uh, the property practitioners, regulatory authority. Um, they, they're the ones that deal with, with disciplinary matters when it comes to cases like this. So all else fails, estate agent's not liable, but you feel that they didn't engage with you properly. Uh, that's pretty much the only course uh, relief that you'd have is to to lay a professional complaint against them. Did I miss anything? No, no, I think that was a, a perfect answer. And um, I think, you know, we've had a couple of these cases and we do deal with these on behalf of clients, but it really is, um, it's worth noting at the start of an engagement like this. I mean, these are quite high standard um, cases. Um, from a legal perspective, um, I think you had, had mentioned it, you know, there's really got to be some level of element of fraud in the circumstances, if there aren't obligations which are placed uh, in legislation and you are sitting with a footstool's clause in the agreement. So um, it does it does have a lot of, um, there's a lot of equity in looking at what the latent defects are and, and that's exactly where you started. I think um, a lot of these cases, you know, that I've experienced, you know, you've really got to determine whether the latent defects are of such a nature that it's worth engaging in, in a legal proceeding like this because these are complex cases um, yeah. And they do take, uh, from, from a legal perspective, these takes years to ventilate expert evidence. Um, they're, they're really quite complex uh, situations. But, uh, you know, like all legal answers, it depends. That's, that's yeah, always absolutely. the answer. Yeah, no, really. And, and the problem is, it's exactly what you said. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, we find sometimes that these snowball, um, uh, uh, snowball out of control. So even if you look at the way the question was formulated, this is it's a real it's a real response to a problem. But yeah. we we're speaking uh, we speak about latent defects, and I mean latent defects was mentioned once. Um, mm -hmm. the, the state agent was mentioned several times. So obviously it's an emotional response. I totally appreciate it. it's not a judgment, but um, if we start in the wrong place. Um, mm -hmm. The estate agent could be as nasty or non-responsive as like, but if there isn't a latent defect that you can hold them responsible for, uh, all of that it, it is for naught. So like start yeah. where you need to start and then uh, kind of move along the process uh, from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right.